Hey everybody, it's Friday. I'm Matthew Laria, and you're watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we're gonna get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you, Lord, so much for all the good things you've been revealing to us this week on the broadcast. Lord, we ask you again today for revelation of your Word. We ask you for grace and help to receive it, to put it into practice, and to see it work in our lives, and we do thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, all this week on the broadcast, we've been doing a series of teachings entitled The Truth About Anxiety and Depression. And friend, over the last 25, 20 years or so, the enemy has been making a strong push where these things are concerned. And so many people today are being overtaken by anxiety and depression. And so this week on the broadcast, we've been going to the Bible to get the truth about anxiety and depression because the truth of God's word is the only thing that will make us free. And so we're looking at these things from a biblical perspective. We're looking at these things from the perspective of the word of God. And I believe that the Lord's been ministering to you and helping you this week on the broadcast. And I believe that you're coming into a time where you're walking completely free from anxiety, from depression, of all different degrees and all different kinds, praise the Lord. Now, we've been giving you seven truths about anxiety and depression from the Word of God this week on the broadcast, and I want to give you the first six again in review. The first one was that God wants you free. The second truth about anxiety and depression is that you can be free. The third truth about anxiety and depression is that God is your answer. The fourth truth about it is that the truth of God's word will make you free. The fifth truth about anxiety and depression is that you have authority over it. And the sixth truth about anxiety and depression is that it is not yours. You have Jesus's very own peace. Now I want to go again today to John chapter 14. And of course we'll give you the seventh truth about anxiety and depression on today's broadcast. Let's begin by reading in John chapter 14. And let's look here at verse 1. Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Now right here in this verse, Jesus identifies where the roots of anxiety and depression are located. He said, Don't let your heart be troubled. Now again, the word troubled means anxious, sorrowful, or distressed. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. Well, what is the heart? He's not referring to your physical blood pump. You go look the word up in the Greek and, and do study on it. He's not referring to your physical heart that beats. He, the heart is referring to the inner man the center of man, the spirit of man, you could say. The heart is referring to something spiritual, not something natural. It's not referring to something that you can see with your natural eye. It's referring to something spiritual. And the heart, not the physical blood pump, the inner man, the heart, your spirit, your soul, you could say, and we'll talk some about that later, this is where you get troubled. The heart, the inner man, the spirit, the soul, this is where joy happens. This is where peace happens. This is where anxiety and sorrow happen in here on the inside of you. Not your blood pump, in your inner man. Um, let me read you a few verses. In Proverbs 15, 13, it says, A merry or a joyful heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of heart, the spirit is broken. Jeremiah 15, 16 says, Your word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. John 16, 6, Jesus said, Sorrow has filled your heart. Come on, and then Psalm 27, 3, the psalmist said, My heart shall not fear. Where do these things place, take place? Where does anxiety and depression, where do they have their roots? They have their roots 
in our inner man, in our, in our spirit, in our soul, in the part of us that you can't see on an x-ray screen, in the part of us that, that you can't do an, M, an MRI on your spirit. Your spirit is unseen. Your inner man is unseen. Your soul is unseen. It's spiritual. It's not natural. That's where the roots of anxiety and depression are. When Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled, he's referring to your inner man. Now, it's, it's so vitally important, friend, that you understand this. Jesus did not say, don't let your brain be troubled. Why, why didn't he say that? Because the brain is not the seat of emotion. The brain is not, is not the root of emotion. That's not where emotion happens. Emotion happens in the inner man and it will register in your brain and it will affect your brain. But the root of emotion is not the brain. It's the heart. It's the inner man. That's why Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled because that's where the trouble, that's where the depression, that's where the sorrow, that's where the anxiety, that's where the root of it is. That's where it takes place. Now let's go over to Luke chapter 16 and let me um, read you some verses that'll, that'll bring this out. Friend, we, you and I, we are spirit beings. We have souls and we live in physical bodies. And so right now you're looking at me and the part of me that you see is, is you see my body. But my body is not all there is to me. I'm a spirit being. And so inside my body is my spirit. Now inside my spirit is my soul. My soul is made up of my mind, my will, my emotions. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 talked about us being spirit, soul, and body. And so your spirit and soul are not the same thing. Your spirit houses your soul, and the soul is the part of you, the mind, the will, the emotions. Now, now why did I say all that? Because depression, the root of it, is in your soul, which is in your spirit. It's not in your brain. And I want to prove that to you by reading you some scriptures here in Luke chapter 16, starting in verse 22, it says this, The beggar, Lazarus, died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Now, both of these guys died, and so their bodies were buried in the earth. And so they don't have their bodies anymore. Their, their physical bodies are here. Their, their brain is in the grounds that they're buried in. It goes on to say in verse 25, Abraham said... To the rich man, son, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things and likewise, Lazarus, evil things, but now he, Lazarus, is comforted. That means he's been alleviated from distress of mind, alleviated from misery. And you are tormented. The word tormented means you are in sorrow, are distress. Well, my question is, if their brains are in the ground and brains are where the emotions occur, then how are they still feeling comforted? How is one guy feeling sorrowful and miserable and the other guy, Lazarus, how is he feeling peace and joy and comfort? Because the brain is not the seat of emotions. And when you talk about anxiety and depression. For an anxiety and depression are not chemical imbalances in the brain. People that battle anxiety and depression will have chemical imbalances in their brain. That, that is not where anxiety and depression start. Now, medical science agrees with what I just told you. You can do study on it. Go to Google, you know, go to the Mayo Clinic. You can go to reputable websites. And, and that's what I did. And what you'll find is there is a chemical imbalance hypothesis 
that says that mental health conditions are caused by a chemical imbalance in the brain, but this has been largely disproven. What they found is that there are differences in the brains of people who have depression and anxiety as to those who don't, but it's been disproven that the chemical imbalance causes the anxiety and the depression. And so what am I saying? Medical science acknowledges that depression doesn't start in the brain. It just shows up in the brain. Now, the medical community is a little bit confused about where it starts. And the reason they are is because they are looking at it like it's a physical problem. And so they try to do research in the body to find out, well, what's the cause of anxiety and depression? And the problem is you're not going to find it in your physical body because that's not where it starts. It starts in the spirit of a man. It starts in the soul of a man. And so the emotions you have will register in the brain, but they don't start in the brain. Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be afraid. And so depression and anxiety happen in the spirit of a man. They happen in the soul of a man and they just show up in the brain. And so to address, why'd I say all that? To address anxiety and depression, we have to work in the right location, which is not the brain. The right location is the spirit of the man, the soul of a man, and we have to use the right tools. If we're going to work in the spirit and soul of man, we have to use a tool that will actually address the spirit of the man, and that tool is the Word of God. And so again, to address anxiety and depression, we have to work in the spirit, and we have to work with the word. Why? Because that's where the depression resides. That's where the anxiety decides. That's where the roots are. They're in the spirit. They're in the soul. And this is why nothing the world offers addresses the root of anxiety and depression because all they have is natural things. And what the world will say is, well, if you exercise, that could help anxiety and depression. If you eat right, that could help anxiety and depression. If you get enough sleep, that could help anxiety and depression. And I'm not against any of that. I'm, I'm not saying that those things can't be of some assistance, but none of that addresses your spirit. None of that addresses the inner man. Even when you talk about using medication to address anxiety and depression, the medical community says this, Medication may help relieve some symptoms, but it doesn't cure the underlying problem, and it's not usually a long-term solution. Friend, that's what the medical community says about medication. And so medication, you have to understand, I'm not telling you not to take it or to take it. You be led of the Lord. But you have to understand the medication only addresses the chemicals in the brain. And so it's addressing the, the, the problem of anxiety and depression on the fruit level, and it's not going to the root. Why? Because that medication addresses your body, but it doesn't address your spirit where the roots of these things reside. You see, anxiety and depression are spiritual problems, so only a spiritual remedy will suffice and the remedy that will go to the root of the problem and rip the anxiety and depression out of your heart, out of your soul, the remedy is the Word of God. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 in the CEV says this, His Word can cut through our spirits and souls. Proverbs 16, 24 says, Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul. And so what you can see from those verses is that the Word of God will work on you on the inside. It'll work on your soul. James 1 talked about how the engrafted Word would save your soul. And so you see the Word of God has the capability to go in you and start working on you in your spirit in your soul. That's where the depression is. That's where the anxiety is. No medication can do that. No, no, the a right uh, food diet won't do that. Exercise won't do that. Some, some natural 
counselor that's not even saved won't do that. But the Word of God will and the Holy Ghost will. Depression and anxiety are spiritual problems. And only a spiritual remedy will suffice. Only a spiritual remedy will go to the root. Only the Word of God will go to the root of it and rip it out of you. Praise the Lord. See, when we feed on the Word, Proverbs 4 talked about how God's words are life to us. Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 15, 16, he said, Lord, your words were joy. I ate them. I found them and ate them. And they were joy and rejoicing to my heart. When we feed on the word, feed on God's word, feed our spirit, it will start to go in there and heal us inside. It will be life to our inner man. It will be joy to our heart. Proverbs 16, 24 said that pleasant words are sweet to the soul. And so God's word is the remedy and feeding on his word and acting on his word. Joshua 1, 8 said that if we meditate the word day and night so that we do it, we'll prosper in everything that we do. And so acting on the word will cause you to prosper on the inside. It'll cause you to get healed on the inside and get, get whole on the inside so that you walk free from um, depression and you walk free from anxiety. You know, the word also gives us instruction about what to do with uh, cares, or you could say anxious thoughts that come to us. It tells us to cast all of our care over on the Lord. Well, see, when we act on that word, that'll have a lot to do with whether or not we walk free from anxiety and depression. And we have to cast our cares on the Lord. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verses 8. Verse 8 tells us to fix our mind on certain things. And then in Romans chapter 8, it teaches us that what we think about will have everything to do with the peace that we walk in and the joy that we walk in. And so, friend, when you go to the Word and find out what it has to say about anxiety and depression and start doing what the Word tells you to do, that is when you will get free from anxiety and depression because the Word will deal with the inner man. It will deal with your soul. It will deal with your heart. And that is where the roots are of anxiety and depression lie, praise the Lord. And so the seventh truth about anxiety and depression is this. Anxiety and depression are spiritual problems that require a spiritual solution. They are not physical problems and they cannot be solved with a natural solution. We have to use the word and we have to let the word go to work on our inner man. And friend, if you do, I can testify, you will walk free from anxiety and depression. Years ago, it's been almost seven or eight years ago now, I personally dealt with both anxiety and depression. I'm talking about panic, and, 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 and I didn't at the time, but had I, had I looked up the symptoms on Google, I, I would have had all the symptoms of anxiety and depression. If I went to, to a doctor, I bet I would have been medicated and diagnosed. But I didn't. And I'm not telling you not to. You, you do what the Lord leads you to do. And I'm not telling you it's wrong to do those things. You do what the Lord leads you to do. Be free, friend. <laughs> Be led of His Spirit. But, but I went to the Word. And the Lord helped me. And the Word made me free from those things. God did it. And He'll do the same for you. Praise the Lord. Now as we're closing today's broadcast, I want to remind you of these three things. Number one, anxiety and depression are spiritual problems. Number two, the brain is not the seat of emotion. The spirit, the soul of a man is where emotion takes place. And then number three, to address anxiety and depression, we have to work in the right location, which is the heart, and with the right tools, which is the Word of God. And the seventh truth, again, about anxiety and depression is that they are spiritual problems and they require a spiritual solution. Let's pray. Father, Lord, I pray again over everybody watching the broadcast today and I release faith over them and I speak victory over anxiety and depression in their lives. Lord, I thank you that their depressed days are over. I thank you that their fear-riddled days, that their days of panic and anxiety are over. And I thank you, Lord, that they are grabbing hold, laying hold of the truth of your word. 
and that truth is making them free from anxiety and depression. And Father, I thank you that they'll get free, and I thank you that they'll help others get free from it. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching the broadcast all this week. I believe that the Lord ministered some powerful things to us, showed us some things in His Word that will help us walk free from anxiety and depression. And I want to encourage you, if you know somebody that's bad on these things, share the broadcast with them. Tell them to go watch, watch the broadcast and let the Lord minister these things to them because these things will bless your life and they will empower you to walk in victory over anxiety and depression and enjoy the peace of God that passes all understanding and walk in the joy of the Lord that is unspeakable and full of glory. Hey, you know the deal. Don't forget to come back Monday for the next edition of our Faithful Life broadcast. We'll see you then.